Hey guys, this is a, hopefully a quick update video. This is the second draft of it I've done, so I'm going to try to be briefer than I was last time. Um, I am, I'm back in Dutch Harbor again. Um, this time I wish I could film outside, but the wind is blowing crazy out, and what almost always is in the Aleutians, and um, it, it messes up. You can't hear me talking at all, so I'm unfortunately filming inside the bunkhouse. A couple of people have asked me about specifically what I'm doing here, um, and because of confidentiality, I can't talk about exactly what I'm doing, but I can talk about the job in general. Um, and hope, I think it, I think it's kind of interesting. I am a National Marine Fishery Service ground fish observer, um, and what that means is that I will ground fish. You know, if you know, ground fish are it's it's more it's not necessarily a biological term it's a it's a economic management category that includes basically demersal bottom living fish um, not on the bottom necessarily but near the bottom um, so it includes species like um, the flat fishes the flounders and sole and such rock fishes and um, cod pollock uh, sable fish what they call black cod and stuff like that so um, those those types of fishes are called ground fishes and halibut technically fit into the e ecologically they're in the same category but they're under a different management plan um, and we don't do things like that are upper level pelagic fishes uh, things like um, uh, uh, salmon and such are not covered under ground fish laws and uh, so what our job is we have actually we, we, we work for we don't technically work for nymphs we work for a company that contracts that NIPS contracts to and our job is to monitor fishing activities um, and we have like, it's a multifaceted um, who, who exactly where our data goes um, it goes to multiple different departments uh, so one aspect of our job for example is to monitor fishing activities and make sure that they're in compliance with um, Magnus and Stevens Act and all of these subsequent amendments to it to make sure that um, fishing is in legal areas to make sure fishing practices are done legally. Uh, we don't have any enforcement powers, which is actually a good thing. Um, I couldn't imagine. What we do is we, we, we if we see a violation, we note it. Um, it gets entered into, a, we have forms for that, and then it's submitted. And then enforcement will look at that and see if it's worth, you know, a warning call or a fine or whatever the case may be. Um, the other part of our job is collecting um, biological data. Um, on one aspect for management, we collect it, like how big is the catch? What what are the species bycatch? You know, the non-target species that are caught incidentally in the fishery. Uh, we record some of those um, or all of those, depending. And um, and then we do specific data collection where we will collect. Um, for example, maturity, um, age. Not we don't we don't specifically do age. We will collect the ear bones of some of the fish, uh, which are then sent off to a lab to be aged. And then we do things like we'll do scales, or we'll take, um, we'll sex the fish to find out what you know, we'll, male or female, and then also whether they're mature, immature, um, juvenile, and such like that. So, um, it, it, with this, the data goes to um, uh, these agencies and it's used, it, it's literally, in some cases, weekly um, management. I mean, if, if for example, bycatch levels are high uh, in a particular area, and this is, I'm just one of, of you know, there's hundreds of us out there, though that is then used to, you know, an area may be closed temporarily or closed permanently, or in dramatic cases, um, uh, an entire region could be closed permanently for this this season. So it's pretty pretty interesting um, how it works, and it's not a very glamorous job in the sense that we're not actually doing science in the sense, and I'm not really researching. I'm collecting uh, information for researchers. Um, anyway, so it's a t it's really really tough. Um, it's it's fulfilling in many ways. Um, it, it puts me back out here in the Aleutians. I'm, I'm absolutely in love with the Bering Sea and the Aleutian Islands. I, I, just, I love it here. 
Um, so that aspect of it is, is amazing. I, I have to keep remembering to look up once in a while um, when I get frustrated with the job and actually, um, you know, look around and say, oh, wait, I'm, I'm back in the illusions. Um, I'm here again, which is, which is pretty awesome. Um, but at the same time, it's frustrating because you're in a position here where uh, you're looked on sort of suspiciously by, by lots of different people at different levels. Um, uh, one of them is that they assume that you're a fish cop. They assume that you're, you know, you might as well be wearing a badge and a uniform uh, because they, people think of you as that you're looking, you know, that you're just looking over their shoulder waiting for them to make a mistake so you're going to write them up and get them busted, uh, which isn't the case. Um, like I said, there's we have no enforcement of things. Um, most, I mean, basically violations are a very, very rare thing, uh, which is a good thing. Um but we have to record fishing, you know, how long they're fishing, um, how many hours they're spending, how long are the nets in the water, how long are the long lines in the water. Um, and then we record, you know, their catch and their bycatch. And there's a general assumption that everything they're doing is illegal. Um, you know, so if they're, if they're dumping some bycatch, which in some cases is completely legal, it's a legal thing to do, they are a little bit hesitant to tell you that, if that makes sense. They're like, um, you know, it's like, so how much, you know, do you know what species you dropped off the line? Um, that they'll say none. It's like, well, I know you dropped species off the line. You're allowed to, um, you know, and they'll, they'll deny it. It's, 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 it's a weird position to be in. Um, and I have, it, it sort of takes a while for them, for individuals to realize that you're not really there to bust them. Um, but that's sort of a general assumption. And there's just a lot of, of, you know, there's a lot of people that just won't talk to me. Um, you know, they, people that I, you know, say hello to and they just kind of look the other direction. It, it's, it's a little uncomfortable at times, um, because of the position, but it's part of it. We were in training. We were told to expect some of this stuff. Um, I've, you know, learned, you know, I've, I've learned to answer to the name observer because, that that's become my name, you know, it doesn't matter if it's me or another one or whatever, we're all, they see us, oh, hey, observer, come over here, kind of a thing, it's like, okay, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a whole different world, um, but again, you know, it's, I get to see a lot of really, really amazing things, um, species-wise, I'm interested in biological taxonomy, so getting to see things I've only seen in pictures, uh, is, is kind of fun, um, but, you know, there's, 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 sometimes it gets really, really monotonous. Um, depending on the fishery, you're getting different, uh, you're getting like a lot of one species and you're seeing one species repeatedly, 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 um, or one type of bycatch or whatever. And like things like cod, I mean, fucking cod, they give me nightmares. Cod, cod, cod. Lith, now I will leave you the way you left me and her dying in a fishing net alone god 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 like that okay um um and i wanted to talk about cod a little bit more because cod somewhat are responsible for what i'm doing here not not and I'll, I'll get into it. Um, those of you from the Atlantic coasts, uh, the North Atlantic coasts, uh, both sides, uh, may be familiar with the fact that the Atlantic cod fishery was one of the first major fisheries in the world, um, at the very least in the Northern Hemisphere, to experience a near complete collapse um, in the early 90s, I believe. Uh, it, it was a devastating blow to communities on both sides, um, it, it was huge. And like a lot of tragedies in human history, um, it was a motivation to change a lot of fishing practices. A lot of nations um, instituted policies to make sure that it doesn't happen again. And one of the things that we learned from that, one of the important things we learned from studying the collapse of the cod fishery is that a species can look healthy, meaning that the catches aren't noticeably changing. They don't appear to be noticeably changing. They're bringing in 
X million pounds annually up until the very, very end when suddenly they're gone. Um, and that sort of fine fine tuning of the dynamics of the population hadn't really been looked at, at least not not from an, from a management perspective. And so now again, like looking at things like maturity, you know, you may be bringing in, you know, just as many cod as they were the year before, um, and they may be about the same size as they were the year before, but they're all immature. For example, they may, you know, they may be pre premature, so they haven't spawned yet, and you're bringing in just as many of them. So what you're doing is you've depleted the spawners from the population. Now you're depleting the generation before them that hasn't reached maturity, that are not going to spawn because they're being caught. Um, that sort of a thing. These these effects that can cascade, and then you take out a species, and then it, it, it gets really complicated, and there's people that handle these the, the modeling of those populations. And again, the Magnuson-Stevens Act, um, which was first passed in 1976, is the one that created my position, and there's equivalent um, in Canada, and I'm assuming, over, I don't know the specifics, but I'm sure European nations all have their equivalents as well. Um, uh, both uh, observers plus a whole bunch of management policies that ensure sustainability of the resource. Um, but anyway, um, I wanted to read this because I think it was, I thought this was interesting and I will then hopefully end this quickly. Uh, this is a quote um, by Thomas Huxley. You guys may know him as Darwin's Bulldog. Um, this was in 1883. Uh, Huxley said, a number of the most important sea fisheries such as the cod fishery, the herring fishery, and the mackerel fishery, are inexhaustible. And I base this conviction on two grounds. First, that the multitude of these fishes is so inconceivably great that the number we catch is relatively insignificant. And secondly, that the magnitude of the destructive agencies that work upon them is so prodigious that the destruction affected by the fisheries cannot sensibly increase the death rate. Um, this was an, a, 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 the, the question that being asked was, um, are we depleting this resource? Um, and if you may be aware, there's the, I'll put a link down below. I don't I don't re recall the exact name, but there's a there's a really good book on the collapse of the cod fishery. And it, one of the one of the things pointed out in that book um, is is an old description of cod fishing off of uh, I think it's Newfoundland, where they're describing boats catching near shore boats catching so many cod that they can't pull their nets out of the water and the cod being driven into shallow water, there's women and children with baskets scooping out as much as they could carry. Um, and the, the author was describing, you know, this, this school of cod uh, was so vast that you couldn't see the end of it. <coughs> Excuse me. And so this was sort of looked at as, you know, th there's so many of these, we could never deplete them. And of course, uh, let, about 100 years later, the population crashed. It went from being an abundant species to being a th threatened species or a species of particular concern. Um, and anyway, now, obviously, you know, the, the, the Huxley quote is kind of famous because it sort of stands as one of those, you know, oops, something a scientist said that that's incorrect, um, that turned out to be incorrect, um, unfortunately. But what was funny about this, and this is going to link, this video was just going to be about fishing, fisheries, and um, I wasn't going to do my usual creation thing, but hey, I, they, they tied it, I didn't. Um, I found, when I first was looking for this quote, I found the first hit I got Googling it was uh, the Institute for Creation Research, Henry Morris's old, John Morris's now, um, organization. And it was a an article on ICR, uh, about, you know, how Huxley's evolutionary beliefs led to the collapse of the cod fishery and economic damage to millions. And, which is really funny, because when he said this, this was his oceanography. I mean, this was this was sort of his, his work with, um, in science, oceanography and such, not anything to do with evolution. But then the article summar sort of summarized, you know, the quote, you know, to tell the, the readers what this really means is, that Huxley believed that by removing the weaker fish from the population, we're strengthening, leaving the strong fish behind and strengthening the population or whatever, which was never the intent of it. And I thought it was kind of funny. Um, I was talking to Evo Gen videos the other day, um, chatting with him. And he, you know, I mentioned that, you know, it's like, it's like, wow, you know, we got 
the Holocaust, AIDS, abortion, eugenics, and now the collapse of the cod fishery? Is there anything evolution can't do? Um, it's, just, it's just funny. I, I thought it, I kind of laughed about that. Anyway, I'm going to end this. This is already getting too long. I've tried to make it it's still shorter than the first version. Um, but I had a couple of things I want to get to. Uh, maybe a couple, maybe one. I don't know. Uh, so, let's see here. Um, first, oh, I know. I'll, I'll get... This, uh, I exceeded 3,000 subscribers, which is amazing to me. I want to thank, all, thank you to all the new subscribers. Uh, this is incredible. Uh, I, I, I just don't quite understand why, but hey, I'll, I'll take it. Um, but I wanted to point out that uh, I, I wanted to... I, when I did 500 subs, I did a, a Q&A. And subsequently, I didn't do anything for any of my other big landmarks. Um, and so at 3,000, I think I'm going to do another Q&A. So what I want to do is, um, I, I, about a week from now, um, post your answers down below. I will, um, your questions, I'm sorry, not your answers. Post your questions, and I will, um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer, I don't know how many I'll get to, or whatever it is. But in about a week, I'll look through, and um, I don't know if I'll just pick some questions, or if I'll pick the top, whatever. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to go. Um, but please post and I will hopefully uh, get to that so I think that should be something something kind of fun give me something to look forward to uh, but anyway I'm gonna end this now thank you and uh, take care have a great day and I will see you guys in about a week or you'll see me in about a week all right